Welcome to the Rutherford Laboratory. Uh, we are part of STFC, which is the Science and Technologies Facilities Council. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about what goes on on this site and what STFC is all about. So here we are in the Rutherford uh, Laboratory. It's quite a large campus, as you can see. We're kind of close to where the arrow is. I thought we were going to be in where you're going to have lunch later, but actually we're nearer that big round donut. Um, so the big round donut is the diamond uh, light source. I'll tell you about that in a second. And then there's a large area here which we call ISIS. Uh, and I'll tell you about that. So we do all sorts of amazing stuff here at the Rutherford Lab. There's, uh, well, let's start with diamond down here, the big round donut. So that's what we call a light source, where we have an accelerator which creates very intense x-rays, whereby we can examine uh, molecular structures, chemical processes going on. Um, it's a giant microscope. And we also have a second microscope called ISIS. Uh, this is using neutrons. So there's an accelerator which hits, uh, fires uh, protons into a target here. Neutrons come streaming out. We use the neutrons to examine the properties of material in a complementary way to this microscope. And then there are all sorts of other amazing stuff we have around. We've got some of the world's most powerful lasers here, lasers which can induce nuclear fusion, which enable us to study uh, plasmas. We build satellites and uh, huge telescopes. We uh, do a lot of engineering. Our engineers are fantastic. They support the work. They help build all this amazing kit. Uh, there's Chris up on ladder building a, a big carbon fiber structure, or checking carbon fiber structure, which we built for the Atlas experiment. I'll tell you briefly about that in a second. Um, and then we host a huge computing center, which does a lot of the processing for the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. <coughs> STFC uh, owns a number of sites. It does two things. It supports large facilities. I've just shown you some of those large facilities we have here at Rutherford Lab. And it also provides the funding. It supports uh, our, our, or pays our large subscriptions to the CERN Laboratory, uh, the European Space Agency, and so on. So it funds uh, fundamental research in the United Kingdom, especially in particle physics and astronomy. Uh, so we've got the Rutherford Lab, which I introduced you to. Uh, we've got a sister laboratory up in the north of England called the Darsbury Laboratory, not quite so large. Is that me? Don't do that. We're back. Um, we've got a, a centre in Edinburgh uh, where they uh, do as astronomy uh, stuff. They build uh, telescopes and satellites. And uh, we've got a small. Uh, <laughs> Am I doing something? No. Okay. Uh, we've got a small uh, dish which is for atmospheric studies. Um, this is our, our centre in Swindon where all the research councils for the UK sit. And then we've got the Bowlby Laboratory. Um, that's actually not the Bowlby Laboratory, that's a big mine in the north of England uh, near Whitby, near the seaside. Um, but we have uh, some amazing kit down there. And I'm just going to tell you something about Bulby. It's just too amazing not to. So there's this big potash mine in the north of England where they mine potash for fertilizer. Uh, uh, and at one kilometer underground, we have this amazing lobot. It's very dark. It's very dark. Yeah. <laughs> we have, I don't know if it's the clicker which is inducing this. In the center, you can see um, our laboratory. It's quite a large laboratory, a kilometer underground, very, very clean, hence people are wearing the white bunny suits and special foot colors and so on, um, doing all sorts of things. In particular, we've been searching for dark matter, but we're studying other things. We're studying the effect of radiation uh, on microbes. Um, we're looking at uh, uh, deposits above uh, the ground, uh, above the, uh, the mine, in a way of understanding how we might store carbon dioxide down there um, for carbon capture, for a cleaner environment. Um, we're studying how clouds are formed. All sorts of amazing science goes on there. The particle physics department at Rutherford Lab is involved in a number of projects. We try and support all the major projects in the UK, uh, which they're involved in. Um, so in particular, the big experiments are CERN, ATLAS, and this one doesn't seem to go out. Let's work on this one. 
uh, Atlas and CMS, they're the two huge experiments at CERN. Um, I'm the group leader for the Atlas experiment here. There's also LHCB. We're looking for neutrinos, mysterious particles which can travel uh, millions and millions of miles through stuff without stopping. Uh, this is an experiment going on in Japan. We're looking for dark matter, the stuff that may make up a large chunk of the stuff in the universe which we're, we, we can't actually see. Um, we do research into accelerators, um, computing and so on. So this is the Atlas experiment. It's large. It's uh, 44 meters long, 25 meters across, weighs 7,000 tons, costs half a billion Swiss francs. Uh, and you can see some people there. Uh, it's huge. And what happens is protons collide, they come along the beam pipe, they collide right at the center there. And surrounding the center is what we call the tracking detector, which is looking for charged particles. So here's a, an iconic photograph of Atlas, which you've probably all seen. We say Atlas, there's not much of Atlas there. This was in the early days when we just had the large magnets on the outside. Um, then more, uh, subsequently it looked a bit more like this. You get an idea of the scale by seeing the ladders in the centre there. Uh, so that was that. <laughs> right, we're going over here. Uh, uh, so right at the centre we have this tracking detector which is made of silicon detectors. And the central part of that is the, the pixel detector. So uh, th this, this is made up of lots of small silicon detectors uh, it's, it's not a huge detector itself, total. Uh, it's very expensive, it's very complicated, it contains a lot of channels to read out the data. And the kind of photographs, if you like to think of it like that, that we take with this detector looks like this. So this is a relatively recent photograph of uh, a collision in, uh, at the Atlas experiment. And you can, what happens is multiple protons will collide at different points along the beam pipe over a length of a few centimeters. And what we need to do is try and untangle all of these different collisions uh, and look for the particular collision which is of interest, which might be an example of a Higgs boson, for example. So that's what we've got to untangle. But um, already we're getting a lot of collisions taking place, and this is all getting a bit of a mess. As we increase the intensity of the machine, uh, we will get three, four, five times more collisions. And trying to untangle this will get really difficult. So we need a much better detector on the inside. And what's more, the current detector is getting damaged by the radiation. So we will be building a new detector, which will be able to examine events that look like this. Um, this is a, a drawing of what that detector looks like. And the bit in the middle here is made up of these pixel detectors, lots and lots and lots of them. So we are currently working on the construction of this pixel detector. Um, we are fabricating rings, these are little carbon fiber rings which are about that uh, diameter on which we will place uh, silicon pixel detectors. Um, this is John's apparatus for placing those. This is something that's just happening somewhere over there. Uh, I think I'm a bit disoriented. Uh, not very far from here, uh, this work's going on. Um, now, you're here because you're interested in playing with Medipix Timepix detectors. You're doing amazing stuff, and uh, it's just fantastic reading what you guys are doing. Um, there's some characters who are taking these Medipix detectors around obscure Scottish islands and looking at the radiation around there. Uh, some of you have been looking at the results of Medipix detectors being taken to outer space, uh, onto the, the space station. Um, they're great for trying to understand the different, different types of radiation that exist. So there's some amazing work going on which you guys are doing. Now how does that connect to what I've just told you about? Well, you're playing with these Medipix Timepix uh, detectors, which may look like that depending on how it's packaged up. You've got pixel sizes which are 55 by 55 microns. Uh, uh, 55 microns is about half the width of a human hair. And typically, these detectors have about 256 by 256 pixels in, in a sort of grid on them. So you, you've got a little detector which is about 14 millimeters by 14 millimeters. Uh, you play with one of these detectors, you've got about 65,000 little pixel detectors on that piece of silicon, 65,000 channels. So how does this compare with what we're doing in Atlas? It's very similar. 
We have uh, pixel detectors which have similar sizes of the individual pixels. We have slightly larger detectors, so our detectors are more like 20 by 20 millimeters. So it's a factor of two bigger, but not very different. The difference comes from the numbers that we have. You play with one of these detectors. We have over 30,000 of them in our pixel detectors which we're building for the LHC. You have 65,000 channels, we have at least 4 billion channels. So it's kind of similar. You are playing with the kind of detectors that we are using. You know, this is cutting edge stuff that you are playing with. The only slight difference is we have an awful lot more of them. So, you know, you guys are becoming expert in many picks, time picks. Maybe one day you'll come and work with us and work on these giant detectors for the LHC. And so I hope you guys have a great day. I'm really looking forward to hearing some of the stuff you're doing. Um, enjoy the time and good luck with your science. Thank you very much.